Snow pandemic, record-breaking snowfall strikes Alaska. A pandemic of snow has engulfed a community in Alaska, resulting in the collapse of commercial building roofs. Officials advise citizens to get shovels and prevent a similar fate at home. Anchorage, home to little under 300,000 people, is accustomed to harsh winters. However, unlike any previous time, the city has already received 100 inches or 2.5 meters of snowfall this time. Even the hardy winter residents of Anchorage are becoming weary of the snow-covered pavements and streets, the never-ending shoveling, and the six days of remote study reminiscent of the epidemic. It's miserable, said Tamara Flores, a school teacher working to clear her driveway, as a snow pile towered over her head. It's a pandemic of snow. After an exceptionally heavy snowfall in the previous year, this year is expected to surpass the record of 134.5 inches or 3.4 meters of snowfall. Thus far, three commercial buildings' roofs have given way due to the weight of the deep snow. A person was murdered in a gym and 16 buildings experienced roof collapses last year. More than 30 pounds per square foot or 146 kilograms per square meter of snow, according to officials, was there. It gave the example of a home with a roof measuring around 1,500 square feet or 139 square meters with 30 pounds per square foot or 146 kilograms per square meter of snow, which it said would be supporting about 45,000 pounds or 20,411 kilograms, or about eight full-size light-duty pickup trucks. Nevertheless, the massive snowfall has unavoidably resulted in some enjoyment despite the worries. An enormous six-meter-tall snowman named Snowzilla was built by a resident in Anchorage. This winter is definitely rough, but us Alaskans are definitely built different. We can handle 100 inches of snow and still make it to work on time. We can put up with a lot, resident Damon Fitz said as he shoveled the driveway at his residence. Man who tried to blame twin brother for raping girl and jogger is jailed for 140 years. A man in California who tried to blame his twin brother for the historical rapes of a nine-year-old girl and a jogger has been sentenced to 140 years in prison. Kevin Condor, 58, was convicted back in February of two counts of rape and multiple other charges, one of which involved the sexual assault of a 12-year-old victim, according to the Orange County District Attorney's Office. Police arrested Condor and his twin brother in 2019 after DNA technology connected them to the 1995 rape of a nine-year-old girl who was walking home after buying school supplies, and another in 1998 of a 32-year-old jogger. Condor grabbed the runner and covered her mouth after jumping out of the bushes wearing nothing but a pair of shoes, the attorney's office said. The twins were both arrested as they share the same DNA, but recorded conversations between the pair revealed multiple incriminating statements made by Condor, including admissions that he carried out the crimes, according to the attorney's office. A judge on Monday sentenced Condor to 140 years to life in prison, prosecutors said, while his twin brother has not been charged. DNA was the linchpin that gave that monster a name, and that name is Kevin Condor. The relentless pursuit of justice by the Orange County Sheriff's Department and the Orange County District Attorney's Office has ensured that another monster who preys on young girls and young women will never be free to jump out of the bushes again, Todd Spitzer, a lawyer in the county, said. Inside the world's largest cruise ship as it sets sail The largest cruise ship in the world has sailed for the first time. On Saturday, the Royal Caribbean ship Icon of the Seas, which can accommodate up to 7,600 guests and 2,350 staff members, sailed from Miami of Florida. The ship has 20 decks and a length of approximately 1,200 feet 365 meters, from bow to stern. It is organized into eight neighborhoods. In addition to more than 40 restaurants, bars, and lounges, the ship has a theater, seven swimming pools, an ice skating rink, and six water slides. It has set off on its inaugural seven-day tropical island hopping expedition. Icon of the Seas was officially christened on Tuesday with the help of football legend Lionel Messi and his Inter Miami teammates. The ship has six dual-fuel engines that can run on liquefied natural gas LNG, a fuel substitute that lowers emissions of greenhouse gases and sulfur, according to the Cruise Lines International Association. 
However, environmental groups have raised concerns LNG-powered ships increase harmful methane emissions. It's a step in the wrong direction. We would estimate that using LNG as a marine fuel emits over 120% more life cycle greenhouse gas emissions than marine gas oil, said Brian Comer, director of the Marine Program at the International Council on Clean Transportation ICCT. In terms of global warming over 20 years, methane is 80 times more harmful than carbon dioxide. Reducing emissions is seen to be essential to limiting the rise in global temperatures. Every kilowatt utilized aboard the Icon of the Seas, according to Royal Caribbean, is scrutinized for energy efficiencies and emission reductions. Man shows father's decapitated head in YouTube video. A guy who killed his father and then posted a video on YouTube purporting to show his severed head had a smiling mugshot made public. Police in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, on Tuesday night discovered Justin Moan, 32, his father's beheaded body in the toilet. Moan has been charged with first-degree murder and abusing a corpse. Moan may be seen in the YouTube video clutching his father's head in a plastic bag while donning gloves. Subsequently, the head appears in a cooking pot in the video. Since then, the video has been removed. Then, Moan demanded the execution of all federal employees and branded his father as a traitor for having worked for the U.S. government for a long time. Furthermore, the 14-minute video that Moan promoted right-wing conspiracy theories was taken down due to a strict policies prohibiting graphic violence and violent extremism, a YouTube statement said. Moan supposedly pushed his self-published music and publications, particularly dystopian science fiction, on social media. They stated he was taken into custody near Fort Indiantown Gap, Pennsylvania, around 100 miles distant. Captain Pete Feeney of the Middletown Township Police Department said, We didn't know where he was going and what his intentions were when he left here. Fortunately, we were able to get a location based on his cell phone. Moan was also charged with possessing an instrument of crime with intent. He was denied bail and is scheduled for a hearing on February 8. Adele announces first European tour dates since 2016 with four nights in Munich. Adele has revealed that she has scheduled four nights of shows in Germany for her first European tour since 2016. The Grammy award-winning singer announced on social media that she had a, a bit random booking to play at Munich's 80,000-seat mess exhibition center. When asked if she would be interested in doing a summer tour of concerts in Germany at the end of 2023, she responded, I've been content as anything with my shows in London's Hyde Park and my residency in Vegas, so I hadn't had any other plans. Adele clarified that she was, nonetheless, too curious to not follow up and indulge in this idea of returning to Europe. A one-off, bespoke pop-up stadium designed around whatever show I want to put on. Pretty much slap bang in the middle of Europe, in Munich. That's a bit random, but still fabulous. I haven't played in Europe since 2016, she said. That someone like you, Hitmaker will play three shows at Munich Mess on August 2nd, 3, 9, and 10. As per the live performance tracking website Acidilist FM, Adele has performed in Germany just 14 times. Her final performance in the nation took place in Cologne's Lanxis Arena on May 15, 2016. Her very first performance occurred in 2008 at the Stage Club in Hamburg. In addition, Adele is playing the final show of her weekends with Adele Residency in Las Vegas, which runs through the middle of June. Adele.com is currently accepting reservations for the Munich performances through February 5, public access to the general sale begins on February 9. Brothers charged after weapons, explosives, and a hit list of celeb targets found in New York. Following the discovery of a cache of homemade explosives, 3D printed firearms, anarchist literature, and a hit list containing prominent people, two brothers have been accused. U.S. officials have stated that 39-year-old Andrew Hatziagelis and 51-year-old Angelo Hatziagelis have been charged with 130 counts of different offenses, including suspected illicit possession and sale of firearms. After learning that the two were purchasing gun components and accessories and manufacturing illicit ghost guns, investigators took action against them. 
Ghost guns are firearms that don't have a serial number and are therefore untraceable. They can be bought online and assembled at home, Gun Violence Prevention Group, Brady, said on its website. Ghost gun kits include all of the parts and often the equipment necessary to build these weapons at home, Brady said. Detectives discovered a variety of weaponry, including two fully loaded ghost guns akin to AR-15s with detachable magazines and a partially constructed bomb tripwire, after obtaining a search warrant earlier this month. In addition, they found one assault weapon in the manner of an AK-47, for loaded 9mm semi-automatic ghost gun pistols, two of which were 3D printed, and over 600 rounds of ammunition. A 3D printer, more equipment for building the ghost guns, three sets of body armor, several notebooks with instructions on making explosives, and anarchist literature were also discovered by the police. The hit list, scribbled on a piece of paper, mentioned cops, judges, politicians, and celebrities, as well as a corporate scum and a banker's cum, along with the messages, wipe out the scum and wipe out the earth. Police were so concerned about the explosives that they wanted the entire building on 36th Avenue, which is across from a power plant, to be evacuated before they would enter the brothers' New York house. The two men lived with their mother and another brother, neither of whom are facing charges. Queens District Attorney Melinda Katz said in a statement, the city is safer. We cannot measure the number of lives that were saved, but we do know that these weapons will never hurt anyone.